We are going now to start this workshop on other screening treatment and management issues. Um, the first speaker is Mark Arvin, who I guess you all know. He is a, one of the champions of uh, HPV testing. He has really done one of the best overview summaries showing the advantage of this uh, screening method. So uh, Mark from Belgium will tell us about long-term follow-up of women treated for SIN 2, 3, high seal. Mark. Thank you, Nubia, for my title of champion. Um, So let's first start with the background. Um, after it, patients, uh, women who have a, a high-grade sin, have according to an old uh, meta-analysis, uh, more than 20 year old, about 5% risk to progress to cancer. Um, a very particular story came from New Zealand and from that story, we know that untreated carcinoma in situ have a risk of 30% to develop into cancer. So these lesions must be treated. Treatment of CN2 and 3 is effective. Nevertheless, there is still, after treatment, an increased risk to develop invasive cancer. And this risk uh, continues up to 20 years. So there are recommendations to follow up women uh, with the treatment for 10 up to 20 years. So it is crucial to monitor the possible treatment failure with an accurate test. And this will be the topic of my presentation. We have uh, recently updated uh, a systematic review on the prediction of residual or recurrent CIN after treatment. Um, the inclusion criteria where women were treated and uh, an histologically confirmed CN2 or CN3 uh, was confirmed. And there was follow-up with cytology and high-risk HPV uh, about six months in the window between three and nine months post-treatment. And there was a follow-up of at least 18 months. Okay, the rest is uh, detail. I will skip. Um, now, in the studies uh, that had documented uh, the accuracy of HPV tests, uh, we found 13 studies, and the pooled risk of recurrent disease uh, during at least uh, 18 months was something less than 10%. We can predict failure. This means uh, recurrent or residual CN2 plus by looking at the section margins of the excised cone. But the sensitivity of this indicator is quite low. It's uh, less than 50%. The specificity uh, is uh, not fantastic either. Nevertheless, better. It's uh, of the order of 86% when you pull the five or six studies that we have identified. Now, there are more studies documenting uh, the accuracy uh, of follow-up cytology. In 15 studies, the, the pooled value uh, was 75%, 74%. But this contrasts with the very high sensitivity of uh, high-risk HPV DNA detection uh, about six months after treatment. This is over 90%. Now, you can uh, construct individual forest plots. Uh, a more uh, challenging method, which is statistically much more robust, is the HS rock regression. And here you pull the sensitivity and the specificity of your method at the same time, and you take into account the negative correlation between sensitivity and specificity. And you have each uh, study represented by a dot in this rock space, and um, by a statistical uh, method, 
you can estimate a summary sensitivity, which you read here, which is 93%, uh, and a specificity, which is 81%. Uh, this are the these are the accuracy estimates of uh, HPV testing. We did the same for cytology, and all the dots uh, in blue represent accuracy of cytology, and you see immediately that the sensitivity of HPV testing is substantially higher, and the specificity, uh, which you read on the vertical axis, is quite similar. So this is an interesting finding, higher sensitivity, similar specificity of HPV compared to cytology to predict treatment failure. Now here we look in this plot on the relative sensitivity, and you see this at the right, and the relative specificity of HPV versus cytology. So if the uh, ratio is higher than one, this means that HPV is better, and you see uh, indeed, it is at the right. The relative uh, sensitivity is 1.25, and you see it, it is homogeneous in studies where hybrid capture 2 was used and in studies where the PCR was used with no heterogeneity part test. If we look at the specificity, then we see that for both tests, the relative uh, specificity is slightly lower than 1, but not significantly lower. So the specificity of HPV post-treatment is equal to that of cytology. And this, for whatever test, is used here uh, in our studies that we have retrieved. Now an interesting finding, which is often not reported in systematic reviews, is the comparison of the combination cytology with HPV versus HPV alone. We have here the plot of the relative sensitivity, and the pooled value is 1.06. You see that the diamond representing the summary of all the studies crosses the unity line, so there is no significantly higher sensitivity by adding cytology compared to HPV compared to HPV testing alone. If you look at the specificity, then you see that the combination is less specific, statistically significantly less specific uh, than HPV alone. The relative specificity is 0 0.92, and the confidence intervals go from 88 to 96%. Now to summarize, um, in the first line we compare HPV with cyto. Um, HPV is more sensitive, it is equally specific. If we compare HPV with the margins, HPV is uh, even more, and statistically significantly more, sensitive uh, than the margins. Uh, the specificity is equal. And if we compare the combination HPV with cytology with HPV alone, the sensitivity is similar, the specificity is lower of the combination versus HPV alone. Now we can also uh, do, th these were all general HPV tests where uh, high risk HPV infection is identified without distinction of the types. There is also some limited literature where HPV genotyping uh, is used and there the point of attention is the observation of a persistent type specific infection in the cone or just before uh, doing the conization and uh, in the post-treatment follow-up. Um, we see that um, the sensitivity of type-specific persistence uh, decreases when you compare to uh, just uh, a high-risk HPV detection. Um, there are four studies. That, uh, in a study uh, from Crimer, it was substantially lower from 97 to 77. In Brismar, it was also substantially lower. In the Belgian study, there was no loss in sensitivity. And in the study from Kang, also no loss in sensitivity. So data are very heterogeneous. Uh, it's difficult to make a conclusion out of this. Of course, uh, the sensitivity decreases, but the specificity 
and uh, due to that the PPV increases. And you see here a few uh, values. So it's difficult to come to a conclusion what the uh, validity of uh, each PV genotyping is in the post-treatment follow-up. Uh, the results suggest the potential utility as an adjunct test to increase the PPV, but if there is no persistence, we cannot conclude that there is no risk of residual or recurrent disease. Now, all this data fulfilled the criteria for a follow-up up to uh, 18 months, at least 18 months, but one study is particularly interesting because uh, it had a follow-up to over 20 years. It was a study from the Netherlands and it was pooled, uh, three separate studies were pooled. The results were published in Lancet Oncology last year. Uh, there was follow-up with cytology and high-risk HPV DNA testing using the GP56 PCR. And uh, it was concluded from this study that three consecutive negative cytologies or two negative co-tests, co-tests means cytology negative and HPV positive, correspond with a, a low risk of recurrence, which is equal to the risk of a population with negative cytological screening. And the authors of that paper derive from uh, their findings uh, the recommendation that co-testing cytology with HPV at six months and 24 months is the recommended uh, follow-up scheme, at least for the Netherlands. But uh, an observation I have is that co-testing is not more sensitive than high-risk HPV alone. So it would be maybe interesting to discuss, should we not abandon cytology and just offer uh, two repetitive HPV tests? So I've uh, adapted some plots from the paper of Cochrane in the Lancet Oncology, and you see at the bottom that women who have three times a negative cytology or two times a negative co-testing have a very low risk of developing uh, high-grade SIN, and here it is even CN3, uh, over the next uh, 10 years. Go back. Whereas women uh, who have at least two, uh, one test, uh, whatever, cytology or HPV, or uh, have a positive cytology, whatever, in a series of three uh, cytological examination, have also a similar but uh, a quite high risk of developing CN3, which is of the order of uh, 10 to 13 percent. So to conclude, high-risk HPV DNA testing after treatment predicts residual or recurrent CIN with a higher sensitivity, but only a slightly lower and not significantly lower specificity compared to cytology. Histology of the section margins is a very poor predictor of the outcome nevertheless related with the outcome, but the sensitivity and the specificity uh, are both low. Uh, the combination of cytology and HPV uh, is uh, not more or slightly more uh, sensitive, not significantly more sensitive, but it has a significantly lower specificity than HPV alone. You have to be careful in the interpretation of these studies. There is some heterogeneity of studies in the methods and timing of follow-up. So we should not forget that and not, not over-interpret this as eventually. Um, it would be good to follow the exercise what our colleagues from the Netherlands did and to generate more follow-up data since the high sensitivity of HPV testing might be uh, valid for a short time. This was also documented in Sweden. Uh, it would be good to uh, make the data from the Netherlands more robust and generate more long-term uh, studies. Now, I think that that uh, suggestion from the Netherlands uh, could be discussed for uh, more universal implementation 
high-risk uh, HPV testing and cytology at six months and at 18 months or at 24 months could be a good and safe and feasible uh, recommendations to follow up women with uh, a high-risk disease that has been treated with excision or with ablation. So I see I'm perfectly in time. Um, so, Nubia, dear colleagues, I, I thank you for your attention.